everyone. You're listening to the Three Pound Thirty podcast. I'm your host Asha. She's not our host, and I am Reem, and I'm Senesino. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, buddy. How is everyone this week, Lee? Alhamdulillah, good, not man. bad. Alhamdulillah. Hey, how are you guys? All good. How was your gardening today, Reem? It was amazing. It was a workout, bro. It was. I, I actually, I haven't like moved that much. I don't think ever. Like it was, <laughs> it was peak. I did, I did bits. Maybe like two hours and a half of just. Bruv, it, it actually is a workout. It's the, I think it's the it's the worst workout. Like it's on level, it's on par with swimming. No, it's actually so satisfying though. But I was so disgusting. Like my my <laughs> hands, my feet. I look oh, a nail broke. It was all going down. Even though I was wearing double gloves. I'm not gonna lie. I came here. I thought it was a 60 minute makeover. <laughs> it was literally like everyone was out. <laughs> everyone, the whole squad, even the neighbors were out trying to trying to get involved. Bruv, the neighbor, so cute. Like the, the, the way we had it planned but he oh. did well but yeah man it's good alhamdulillah <laughs> me my mum and my dad were all out chilling <laughs> it was nice alhamdulillah bro but i proper didn't expect my dad goes shambak not no no emotion no nothing. way shambak and like lifts his head That's no the point, way yeah. and i could see her in a car and i was like what i was baffled i was like how did she, i thought i was baffled i truly thought it's six on the dot how did she get here what happened what what's gone on she Wait, hasn't no. messaged nothing she just came along it I thought like she was that. sleeping, bro. I'm not gonna lie, me too. But then when she just turned up, I was pro- I was proper confused. I looked so crusty. I felt you, bad I, that your friend I, saw me looking like that. <laughs> that was the first time you guys have first met. meeting, and I looked <laughs> disgusting. No, it's fine. Everyone looked fresh, to be honest. Uh, don't lie. Safe. Yeah, you look fresh, but everyone looked fresh. <laughs> How's the heat, Cino? You know? Um, I'm trying to stay away from it, so I don't really know. The only, the only time i feel it really is when i like run to the shop downstairs which i really don't need to because they just come I'm to you if you dead. call them which is fantastic when you say run do you actually mean run or do you mean like casually stroll because i well, bet you ain't running yani- <laughs> <laughs> even if i run it's not yani it's, it's a, like a half a second thing because it's literally about three steps away from the door so mm. but yeah man it's good alhamdulillah i just i'm just I know I say this every single week, but I'm just counting down the days to come home. It's been a long yeah. time. It's and been like, what? Left, you know, it's only 20 days left. December? Leave. Was it December the last time I came? It's only 20 days left. I think so. Or no, I think maybe, I don't know why. November. Like October. Yeah, I feel like no, it was no, it, was no, than that. it was in December. It was, 100%. it was November, definitely for the wedding. Um, And you were there for my birthday as well. Oh, yes, I was. Yeah, yeah, definitely November. So th- this is th- this is the longest period that I've been away from the UK because in in the first year that I moved, I was pretty much coming every like two three months because I had to, but now it's been about six seven seven months eight months. Yeah, man, but it's, c- it's coming soon, inshallah. So today is the seventh of July. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's also the fourteenth anniversary of the seven seven attacks in London. Completely, oh. completely forgotten it. I did forget. It's yeah. ver- that would be very very easy anniversary to to sort of forget, yeah. but. Do you guys remember where you were when you when you heard about the seven seven attacks? I do, yeah. What were you doing? I was at home. <clears throat> I'd called in sick for school. I was proper not well, and my brother was on work experience, and he worked um, in Holborn, and he got on the mm-hmm. train. So we found out about it. Oh. My grandma called from Iraq asking if everyone wow. was okay, and he basically like missed that train or like something mad. Like he stopped off and got food or something like that, but it was en route his way it was just all a bit mad and then he obviously we didn't get through to him for ages and then I think he went into the office and they sent him home and then they he called in from there and then was like yeah I'm good I'm fine but he had to walk home because all the transport it was so, locked yeah, off it was locked off but I remember my pet from when my grandma called from Iraq mm. to ask if we were okay and That's I just mad. remember my mum being so shook because that was obviously when I was like 15 Mm. the other ones where mm. it's like he never really took underground before yeah. <laughs> um but alhamdulillah so that's what i was doing i remember it it was just yes yeah, like you know and you can still visualize all the images from then mm. yeah yeah it was peak what about you guys i don't actually remember a thing really yeah i think there was an entire it's an entire part of my life that i've um blocked erased out. and blocked out completely so i don't remember i don't actually remember the news say some black boy the, i don't actually remember the um, hearing that in the news i don't remember i don't just don't remember it really yeah I just proper don't remember it. i know i'm did like you, I, when was it did you say it was 14 years ago five yeah wow yeah i just don't wow. remember it at all 
14 years, wow. I don't so think where, I so remember where, either, so you know. So where were you in primary school? Secondary. Secondary school. You what, sorry, Sino? I don't think I remember either. I, I only remember like, maybe like mm. bits of it. Like I remember thinking, I, I remember I, I remember I was, the first thought I had was about my dad because he, he works in Central. And I, I remember we couldn't get through to yeah. him. But other than that, I don't remember anything. But with, with like 9-11, I remember the details, which is weird. Oh yeah, that was different. I don't remember yeah. that yeah. even. You don't even remember like, what, 9/11? four years prior? No. Yeah. Wow. No. Was it? I, I think the reason I remember the seven 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 was because it because like Santa said, you know them ones where you 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 remember that that anxious feeling of like yeah is everything okay that mm. um I think if my brother wasn't on work experience and going into that way I wouldn't have remembered nine eleven I remember it so clearly and my mum said you literally went to bed that night and goes what happened to the people like genuinely Aww. I was in year five. And then I literally was so baffled about what happened to the people. I was like, so confused. So yeah, I do remember it. 9-11 was actually insane. Yeah, I, like as many years as, as, as many years that pass, you still don't, you still don't like yeah. really comprehend what actually happened. Like it was actually such an insane mm. moment in all our lives. You, yeah, sh- you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't remember anything at all. Like not even seeing it on TV. Mm-mm. I, don't, I, I remember seeing I remember seeing on on TV but you know the ones where it's just like wow like I was just a youth like I didn't really understand the um, I didn't really understand how heavy it actually was at the mm. time like mm. like ugh, I don't know like uh, I lived in a house of like everybody was fairly young nobody really cared about the news your biggest priority was going out to go play with your friends like it just <laughs> and it was only my mum that was really about it and like yeah. Like yeah, I it just I don't I don't remember it. I d- yeah. I didn't feel like there was any sort of mad change in like the atmosphere near where I lived in school. Nothing like really. Yeah, nothing. I th- I think and I and and considering the fact that I went to predominantly white schools for a, for a large part of my life, and then it was only so when so when did that happen? It was we would have still been in what primary we? We school. We were in year five. Yeah, Pri- yeah. Yes, yeah, so I went. I was still in like, yeah, I was still in like a very. I lived in a very predominantly white area, white school, like considering that and I never really felt my life changing I wasn't really like affected by it I think that's that's quite interesting but yeah yeah, it was like it was only until I started to get older and I I was I always heard of 9-11 I always knew that there was something that happened that day but it's to me at the time as a you yeah it was an insignificant day Mm. and that's why I don't remember it because nothing spectacular Mm. happened that day in my in my humble tiny little brain <laughs> like just, just living life living free i think i think you're right about being surrounded by like it was lots of like lots of kids in the house because mm. i remember with us the news was always on mm, mm. like the news was always yeah. on. yeah mm. yeah and i remember everybody panicking because mm. everyone knew what was going to happen next really everyone knew what was going to happen next that's what it was for us in mm. like my household mm. Mm. And then I do remember people's attitude changing because people, while I was growing up, no one knew where Iraq was. Mm. Really? No one knew what Iraq was, like mm. what it was. Mm. So then I remember people fi- being like, oh yeah, you lot did 9-11. Oh, no, sorry. Isn't that mad? Like this is this is something- gonna come for you. This is something I'm, I'm still like confused about is that the the perpetrators of the, of the 9-11 attacks, right? And this is like record, on record is factual evidence. 15 of them were Saudis. 15 of them were Saudis. Where, at what point did it switch from Saudi Arabia to Iraq? That's why I want to understand. I still don't understand how it went from like Iraq, from Saudi Arabia to Iraq and Saddam Hussein and all of that Sana, stuff. This whole thing doesn't make sense. Mm. <laughs> the whole, the whole situation. Yeah, but did no one question that? Like really, no did no one really from question that? that? How did you go from there to there? Well, remember they went into Afghanistan first. Yeah, where's the link? I don't. I mean, Almost. Afghanistan. I, uh, I kind of understand. I understand no, Afghanistan. The Taliban. Yeah, I can't. I understand w- w- with Afghanistan because they were going after Al Qaeda and all of that stuff. But where did Iraq come from at this point? Because there was no ISIS. There was no. There was no Al Qaeda. I don't understand. I just. I think they. Were they saying the I weapons think of mass destruction. It was. It, what was it? So no, it was Al Qaeda that did that. Nine eleven. No. Yeah, 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 I know, were, but I'm, I'm saying they, they were saying how they were saying how there they was were no based Al- in Iraq or based in those Afghanistan. kind of end countries, Afghanistan. But yeah, they were saying that they were based in them kind of ends. 
That's yeah, why yeah, but they were not scared of weapons they... of mass destruction. Yeah, they were. Mm. But everyone knew that. That's why millions of people came out to protest. Mm. Like people were saying, because there was multiple reasons for the wars. It was weapons of mass destruction, liberating the people. Like nothing made sense. There were like seven. So it was just, <laughs> yeah, it was just a silly, silly, confusing one. But people are living. People survived. You know them ones. Mm. Yeah, but after what, man? Like, did it really need to happen? I, I'm, I'm so, I'm, so, I get pissed, yeah. really pissed off when people say stuff like that. Like, I, I, it's like it's a great thing to be resilient and you know, rise from the ashes and all that stuff. But it doesn't take away from the fact that more than a million people died or were killed. Let's say, it doesn't take away from that. Do you know what I mean? Like, and 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 the fact that like they're they're so like they have they're, they're so audacious in again, recently or in recent years anyway they've been like really audacious with it like okay yeah we made mistakes there weren't any weapons da, 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 da. and and they go on like nothing happened I'm I'm so baffled like, that there's no one like, in the Hague not not just obviously not justifying it in yeah. any way because you know there is no justification mm -hmm. but uh, atrocities like this are happening daily and not daily but are happening regularly like if we look at mm. what the belgians did in congo i think it was six million killed and nobody talks about that like six million that's mm. and that's on record <sighs> so like i think actually i do think that the, the iraq war received a lot of attention a lot more attention than a lot of other things. Because America's a massive like powerhouse. Yeah, and, and like, also it was during the time where news and media and social media and everything looked a little bit different. Mm, yeah. So I think that- It was when Murdoch was still in like in complete control yeah. of like every bit of information that people yeah. were getting mm. a hold of. But can I, can I just say, sorry to cut you off, Reem, but I think just Sana's point is really, really interesting in that when you look at how, when you look at the situation right now in the fact that, Muslims and people of color are always sort of vilified and made to seem as if we're more dangerous than anything else, yeah? And mm. you, and then you look at how the West is, yeah? They are the most dangerous. Cheeky, yeah. Look at how many people were killed Cheeky. just in Iraq alone, yeah? Mm. Just in <laughs> Afghanistan alone, yeah? And then and then way up of what ISIS have done. How many yeah. people have ISIS killed? How many people have, have America well, ISIS killed? ISIS have killed more America more Iraqis than anyone yeah, in the West. Deep it. It's yeah. like, it's like the West are the terrorists. But I, but I feel like this is, I feel like this is fact, like, I feel like it's well known. Like even if we look at imperialism and the effect it's had, like the, 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 the level of like, just absolute piss take. Brother, imperialism was a piss take. Colonial, mm. Colonialism was a piss take. Like how did, how did they manage to get away with that? Some mm. small island, bruv. Mm. It's just, it is Bro, overwhelming. We're, we're listening to people who used to burn women because they thought they were witches. <laughs> like, what, the, what, what are we actually doing? <laughs> like, do you know what I'm trying to say? They used to, they're people that used to dump out their shit through the window, like onto the streets. And we're, what? No. But nobody's listening. That's why they've gone to so many wars. Because meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, in our countries, we had a proper sewage system. You men are still chucking out your shit out the window. I'm so dead. So why are we... <laughs> It makes no sense. <laughs> the witches, bro. <laughs> Don't you to say? He's witch, having, witch, witch, Henry witch. Henry VIII did some mad madness. Beheading mad women because you, you couldn't have a, a, a what? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm actually deep in it now. It's actually making no sense. Bro, Henry VIII, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know whether to respect him or be disgusted by they him. They put a whole pig with an apple in its mouth on the table and they eat like that. Imagine that's what we put so many goat on the table with one strand of like grass. <laughs> do we do that? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. no, we, 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 we <laughs> I don't want to say, mouth. but like, we, we put do a whole that. pig with an apple <laughs> in its mouth and go, an and now we will eat. Like, <laughs> no, but like we put like lemons on chicken. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. the whole like chicken a, a alive like no no not alive the whole chicken was beak out with a lemon in its mouth no but that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's a weird shit there's some weird shit to do like sorry why are we I'm no so no, no. i've actually got a headache that's just that's just literally Once blown my put mind a whole lamb out bruv do you do you do eat <laughs> for real no, have you, no, have you ever been like, to no no i've seen i've seen like i've seen like lamb biryanis and how they that like, how they make oh, she it ain't ever mad. seen she ain't ever seen a real so they so, it, so they they yeah, stuff man. it with they stuff it with bare things yeah and then they, they tuck the legs in so it looks like so it's bare set up like this yeah but that's not would you serve it like that on a table with like an apple in its mouth <laughs> the, are you just, just put on by the apple like, 
I just find that very, very weird. I just she, find she's that. most overwhelmed by the apple, isn't it? Exactly. But it's just the our apple. Leaders, not... Our leaders would <laughs> let me not say this because no. To be fair, <laughs> though, I think PG our leaders show. are where we're failing. I don't think we have leaders that are doing what they need to be doing. I remember once Sana said, in order to lead an Arab country, you have to be a dictator. And I was, <laughs> I was shook. I said, Hold on, what did, say? what did I say? What did I say? I didn't hear you. Need to go to <laughs> no, 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 no what did you say? Is someone, is someone in there? It's re- Sana, Sana said, yes, yeah, she was like, obviously you weren't justifying it, but I think what you were trying to say, I just exaggerated it. Sana was just basically saying, in order to be a leader in, in, an, in any Arab country, you need to be a little bit of a dictator in that it's either my way or the highway, low key. Because she was like, you have to be very, very strong. You can't be, you can't be Tony Blair trying to lead the country. Like it's just, it just won't work in terms of like oh, how- Tony Blair was a dictator. No, 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 but like- He was a dictator. He's like, he's one of the sly dictators. You know, they were like dickhead dictators, yeah. Whereas in our Top country, media. you have to like, she was, you were saying how there's people, everyone's trying to fight for your position, isn't it? Yeah, so you have to be mm. kind of more of like a general, more than like a leader. Mm. I think, I think based Sorry, on what, what we've seen- I think based on what we've seen in the Arab world, uh, that's that's been the case. I'm not saying I'm not saying that's what I want, or that that's what we need. I'm just saying that Arabs have in 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 history and in recent history. I don't know. I don't know. You know. I I think that's where we're going wrong. I think that's where we're going wrong. That we have army people lead, but bruv, army. You don't just go and suddenly not have PTSD after you come out of a mm. war or that you've been mm. a general. Like, I think we need to lead with compassion and we need to lo- lead with love. I'm sorry to be a, a, a hippie, but I really no, think no, that's course. what Arab people, I think that's what every country needs, if I'm being honest. 100%. Like a Jacinda I, Arden, left, right and center. Yeah, 100%. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I want generals and military leaders and stuff like that to lead our countries because that, that will go against uh, you know, the Sudanese revolution that will go against uh, the Egyptian revolution. All of all of the revolutions have have been mm-hmm. that kind of scenario. But what I'm saying, what I was saying at the time, I, I I don't even know if I I don't remember if I said this or not. I feel like she's just putting words into my mouth, and now I'm trying to defend it. But I I, I think I think generally that's that's a viewpoint that a lot of people in the Arab world have, which is why yes, not me. I, I believe, believe I agree which is, with you. Which people is why do, yeah. a lot of people uh, still stand by and defend Saddam Hussein because they say. He was yeah. the only leader in Iraq or whatever in the Arab world that managed to control everyone. And he only did so because he was mm-hmm. killing off everyone that was standing against him. Like, that's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. But um, no. but yeah, that's that's the point. And I his sons were preying on schoolgirls. Yeah, man. Have you seen that film about his son? What's it, what's it called? The Devil's Brother or something. Oh, it was weird. The Devil's Double. Bruv, the filming of that was just atrocious. But it was interesting. <laughs> it was actually but disgusting. it was just very... I swear they were speaking. They were like... Blah, 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 and I was like, bruv, this, this is not Arabic, man. Just do better. You like, know, it doesn't you know take ones much. Where they, Go Edgware Road. <laughs> where they have like Moroccans speaking... Uh, trying to speak Iraqi and it just doesn't work. Doesn't work. Bruv, they're lucky if they got a Moroccan. I feel like they got Pakistanis trying to speak Arabic. They're just calm, <laughs> but like... That's just, it's just not accurate. That's the problem. It's just not accurate. Like, it was just very confusing. And all you hear is, like, why are you hell-hilling mid-war? Like, what's happening? That's not what dictators do. You don't just start flipping, celebrating like that. It doesn't work like that. But yeah, yeah I agree with you because I've had multiple discussion with people about this and everyone's like, what don't you love Saddam? And I'm like, listen, I've studied this hard. Like I did my, I did my pretty much my whole university degree was on this. I've got my dissertation on this. And I, I, I did a really... um uh, like a, a really in-depth research project about it obviously not phd level i'm not trying to be some professor whatever but mm. i tried to come with it with a, with the most with the least bias i possibly could which i, I appreciate i can't 100 percent. but i right. know there are a lot of statistics that blew my mind where i was like he did not do well what happened was the person who governed before him and the mm. pe- people that governed before him did the good the right things and he managed to un un veil everything and mash it all mm. up that's the reality took us through mm. multiple wars not us but you know iraqis and and then it's like here we are so anyone who says that and what he did was conceal his ways so that all um he would help lots of other arabs and so mm. he would bring the whole arab world in with him basically which is exactly. cool it was clever um 
but that I think that's why lots of people really love him and and kind of root for him and whatever. Yeah, he's, he's, and it's, you know. especially especially at the time when like Palestine was, uh, I mean, still is a, a central cause, but it was really a central cause back in his day. And and the fact that he stood yeah. with the Palestinians and I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he like, I don't know if he threatened to strike Israel or he did or something, but that's, it always, if you speak to anyone, if you speak to anyone today that defends Saddam Hussein, they will say Palestine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but, I, but I, I really yeah. don't think, I really don't think that's like enough enough for him to be like whitewashed basically because no. he did a he did no. a lot of shit to his own people he killed hundreds of thousands yeah. of like kurds and shias and iraqis basically and and no one seems to like focus on that. anyone who disagreed with him communists yeah he all of them left in the 70s when he came everyone left he went to war with his own neighbor I just, I, I find him, go, like I genuinely find anyone who supports him, I'm like gobsmacked. I'm like, pr- mm. prove me wrong with the facts that I know that this guy is is a boss bitch. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like prove me wrong. Yeah, yeah. And the only but, thing they'll say, like know, I said, is Palestine. Everyone's entitled to their opinions. Yeah. And cool, whatever. We could, you know, that, that doesn't seem, I think that you can have somebody more balanced than that. I don't think it makes sense to say, okay, at the expense of a hundred thousand people, Let's mm. do that and and break in the you know, I don't know. Like he drained the marshes, which was one of our most amazing resources in the south of Iraq. There was just a lot of stupid stuff. But if there is one thing I've always wanted to go see, it's those Iraqi marshes. Mm-hmm. It's stunning. Like I never, I never they knew dra- they they were drained. No, but isn't isn't aren't there like some marshlands or something still in Iraq? I'm pretty sure I've seen pictures of it, like now. There are a few, and I think there was a German engineer who who's an agricultural en- engineer, and I think that he started a project that people can go and volunteer with him um, and, and work so towards rebuilding them. I don't know if he's still doing that now, but this must have been about six, seven years ago. And I think they mm. are trying to regenerate it because it was something very, very special. It is um, special, man. I will try and find out if I find the link or whatever, then I can put it in, pe- in the bio. Well, someone could put it in the bio because you lot know I don't do shit. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah. Yeah, come on. Can I quickly just say that Asha said the other day? (laughs) Nifu, cut it out. (laughs) (laughs) She goes, I thought psychologists were chatting shit when they said your childhood affects you. (laughs) I still can't believe you said that. I didn't say they were chatting shit, but I just, I, I didn't, I didn't believe the correlation in that. It How? was just, it seemed like it was too far fetched. I don't know why. I just didn't, I just, and to the, and to, for a lot of things, I still think that that's the case, but basically, the, basically, this is what's happened. Yeah. So I've obviously gone and uh, researched a bit more about uh, little girl syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> as Santa calls it. <laughs> Younger sibling syndrome, or as Santa calls it, little girl syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gone to go research a little bit more about it because um, ever since, ever since I told Santa that she was, that she had it and she denied it with her chest. I was like, okay, let me go and do a bit of research and come to, come to her with facts. Sana aired all the okay. messages that we sent, by the way, into the group <laughs> chat. And I'm not like, anyways, it. what are you guys up to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so part of the problems of being um, a younger sibling and having younger sibling syndrome is that you are a little bit more selfish. You are... Um, you have no, you basically take on no responsibility. So as an adult, you're a little bit mm. less like responsible. You're a bit more clingy. Mm. You're not, you're not that independent. Um, mm. Just, there, there are just lots of different um, sort of cons of being a younger sibling. Some of the pros mm. were that you'd have a lot of confidence. You'd be a really creative person. Um, you are a bit more of a risk taker and like you're super intelligent. There's, there was just lots of different like pros because as as your parents, obviously, when you when you're the when you're the eldest child, your parent will put so much effort into you. Yeah, everything mm. will. You literally live in a bubble. Like no, they never want you to be running because they're they shook you might trip over your shoelaces and fall. But when you're the second one, they'll be a bit less relaxed. Blah, 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 blah. When you're the youngest, at this point, they're pros. They don't give a shit. So even if you fall down and hurt yourself, they'll be like, okay, get back up again, brush yourself off, call it a day. Mm. So you're a bit mm. more like you take a, you take a few more risks, like because you had that space to, but also because you're not an older sibling, you had no responsibilities for anything, yeah? You were only responsible for yourself, if that. And that's, that's like, the, that's like the, the very most. So I was trying to explain this to Sana and the group that she was saying no, but a lot of what the psychologists are saying is that because 
of the way that you've been raised as a child, it really affect how you are as a person now. So small mm. things like failure is something that I can't deal with. It's really, it's really, really bad, but I hate failing, yeah? And I've only, in the, maybe like the last two, three years, I've started to wrap my head around, if I'm gonna fail, I have to fail fast and move on and move on from that situation. But mm. this is something that most people have already grasped and they, they're okay with failing at stuff and it doesn't seem like that big of a deal for a lot of people, yeah? So anyways, um, and the reason why I found out that I'm not happy with failing or a failure affects me as a person in general because I feel like I'm not worthy if I fail at stuff is because you're kind of protected from failure as a child. So then it made me deep back in the day because, okay, so when we used to have played, um, PlayStation or, or Nintendo, we had this rule where it was winner stays on. So if we were playing like Tekken or something, yeah. Do you guys remember Tekken, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was winner stays on. And I was yeah. never allowed to play with my siblings, yeah. But when my mom was around, I could play because it was by force, yeah. <laughs> so I'd come in, obviously, <laughs> eight-year-old Asha was coming, run, running through trying to play Tekken, yeah. And my mom was like, oh, fuck's sake. So he's give me, he has to give me the controller. I've mm. got to play, but he has to let me win because if I lose, I'm screaming, I'm crying. I get so upset. Then mom says, lock off everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they have to let me win. So I've never, I've been protected from failure from a, from a young age. Yeah. I've never really felt failure. So then that makes me feel like I'm invincible because I never lose that shit, which in a way it was a good thing because then I feel like I can do anything that I want if I put my mind to it, mm. had that mm. mindset all throughout my life. But then now, obviously as you get older, no one, no one, when you're in the workplace, normally be like, oh, Mesquine, let's let her win. Like mm. people, everyone's <laughs> competitive in it, yeah? Mm. So it's, listen, when you do lose that stuff, it hurts you even more. It makes you, it, re it makes you feel like, well, it makes me feel like I'm not worthy. Whereas if someone failed, they'd be like, oh, I could have done this better. They don't, it, mm. It's not like a reflection necessarily of them in general. I, I see it as like my whole world is crumbling down. Like, wow. why am I here? I feel like I'm a fraud. Mm. <laughs> you know the mm. ones? <laughs> But yeah, so it's just small things like that. So obviously, so I came to that conclusion about, oh my God, maybe maybe your childhood mm. does affect you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I thought? Revelation well of the week. Go on. You're one of, you're one of how many? Six. <laughs> That's a lot. It is a lot. It is a yeah. lot, mashallah. But I think there must mashallah. be something in the fact that, you're, that you're, your family's bigger. What do you mean? Like when... when with oh with Sana because yeah. there's only two of them yeah mm. there might be that's that's why things probably feel a bit different if you're from a big family and a smaller family because it's just more it's more like intense everyone's in their in in, in your face yeah, well, I don't know I maybe so. I just thought that yeah maybe because then there was five ahead of you you know the ones where it's like it was it's just very different when there's mm. a few more because then everything can get spread out a little bit nice and then by the time you're there they're just mm. like eh. and i think <laughs> and honestly I, I i feel really really lucky to be the youngest yeah. because you can look at your siblings and see where they went wrong <laughs> and what and what to and what basically to avoid so i saw my siblings at the different stages of, mm. of life so i've seen them in adulthood and i've also mm. seen another one in adolescence i've seen another one in, like i've just seen them at different stages so i know exactly what to prepare myself when Definitely. it comes to life and what to avoid and how not to move and how not to act so even even though my sister's two years older than me those two years are Make mad when you're a difference. teenager. Mm -hmm. From be Imagine a 13 year old and a 15 year old. That's two very, yeah. very different things. I always wished I yeah. had a bigger family. I always wished I, want, I had more really? siblings. Yeah, because oh, you I don't just- don't want it, man, it's no, long. No, it, it, it feels like it's long, but I think, well, you, I don't know. I, I always feel like I draw the short straw. Really? Always. Because- In what, in what yeah. sense? Well, I always feel like I draw the short straw. Because in, in the sense that I, even there's a there's a there's I have there's a level of fragility when it comes to like my personality yeah but there's also a level of strength mm. and and like my mum trusts me to know that I don't I because I don't hold shit in my heart yeah mm. Mm. so she it's more there's more likely that my, my other siblings siblings might get more attention now mm -hmm. than what than what I would mm -hmm. because I don't necessarily need it because yeah. I'm like confident in myself yeah whereas for them they definitely need it because they're a lot older and are used to that attention mm. whereas I'm not because I'm the youngest mm. and I kind of get dashed like you know there was always like <laughs> my mom definitely didn't plan to have six kids man <laughs> like you have to just <laughs> end the mistake that happened in that you know, but not this the mistake but it's like unplanned youths yeah but for them it's like they're so used to having that oh my god mesquite blah 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 like the eldest mm. kid like blah 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 like from from when they were born i don't i never got that because Do mom just sort of let so? me run mom let, let me run free and live life mm. because at that point she just knew it's nothing to worry about whereas for them they're just so used to it i genuinely believe that honestly mm. so i think mm. it's like a continuation of that 
Bruv, that's so interesting. <laughs> Your childhood eviction, I'd have heard my, I told you guys. <laughs> <laughs> my no one listened to me. <laughs> I said I told you guys, but no one listened to me. <laughs> I'm so done with her. <laughs> You're such a fool. I yeah, can't yeah. believe you didn't. You've, have you not? Have, did, you, were you really like, and uh, you didn't believe that there was a connection or correlation between your childhood and now? Not as you, not you as, really not as dramatic so. or as strong as psychologists had made it seem. Only because wow. it's like small things like, um, I love it. These lot have PhDs have studied this and she's like, yeah, no, you're just... <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not that. It's not oh, like, course, actually, it's you're not right, you know. It's just, I'm just like, hmm. I think it's hard when you it's hard haven't to reflected it. on, uh, reflected and seen how mm. it does affect you. Mm. And I think mm. you have now reflected on it and now you can see it. What, what's the, what's yeah. the, the, one of the famous like Freudian sort of theories that you had in, in the sense of like, your relationship with your mum. Yeah. And how, so what? So what was he saying there? Like you, like you want like. You, I think you look for relationships that are like your relationship with your parents. With which, parents. which yeah. I just I thought that was bizarre. I think it's very true. Do you really or, think it's true? Well, it can be, or it can. I think it can go two different ways. Either you step so far away from it, or you are drawn by it, depending on the the, the relationship. If someone has neglected yeah. you. If, if a parent is neglected, I think that what happens is the, the not, and I'm not a psychologist, I don't know this, but I'm just saying, I think that from what I understand and what I've seen is people are more drawn to having people stay there for longer or like mm. they want to, they, they, they will pursue you more. They have sometimes more patience to have to deal with that than say someone who hasn't been neglected, they, who might just be like, bun it, I'm not, I'm not on it or whatever. But these are like, these, this is all complex theories that I'm not trying to like, claim i know anything about but i do oh, think yeah. there's a link <laughs> you're, not trying to dif- you're not trying to do that in a half an hour podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah for real and also like i don't know mm. but, but i do think sorry i do think that there's a link between that and not in not in like a direct way in a very indirect way mm. like the same way you were describing of, of things that have happened um and how it affects you now because what happens is the, the environment around you gets sets up a, p- a particular way and then all that happens is you step into this environment and you step into a different environment expecting the same thing, that's all. Mm. And I think that's how our brains work because of all the, you know, tings going on in there. The tings. The tings. Sana, what's your take on the on the tings? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just shocked Shrek, at this point. I'm just, no, no, I'm just shocked. Why? I, I didn't know this, I didn't know there were people that didn't believe this. Like I thought it was just such a common <laughs> common thing to Wait, know. You, you're probably making it out as if I'm some alien that's just dropped out from you, the sky you, you're, out of nowhere. You are. Like, clearly you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I don't no, know. I just, like, I just thought it was. I just thought a lot of things were far fetched. That's what it was. Why? Why would it be far fetched though? Like as if it was almost like a. It was a bit of a reach. Like for example, like there's a murderer. Oh, his mom never loved him. That's why he killed everyone. It's like it's like no, he was a monster. Like. No, but I not always. People, I was like, I'm not gonna lie. I just thought it was the shaitan. <laughs> you what? You thought it was shaitan? <laughs> I was like, your mom. I just think. I just think it's unfair to blame your parents for how you are as a person. I don't think it's, it's blaming. Not blaming. I think it's acknowledging that there's yeah. certain things, and I think that's what that, I think that's one of the dangers. And I think this is one of the dangers in our cultures as mm. well. Is that we see if we talk about things or we acknowledge things is seen as blaming when it's not or, or talking about it when it's not all we're doing is reflecting i don't think it's a matter of like i think all of our parents tried their best mm. Mm. parents that neglect children have tried their best parents that are using heroin and drugs and alcohol have tried their best mm. it's just an unfortunate situation when children are born into these things and it's like that parents will love their children not all the time but i think more time they do and it's just things have kind of fall out of their control and it can happen to any one of us mm. like parents who have postnatal depression mm. that has an impact on a child and that's something that nobody yeah, can control yeah stuff like that is of course it's normal but you know when you deep like from when you, whenever you so when you see someone who from the outside looking in it looks as if they've had a very a fairly normal upbringing in that they come from like the normal sort of what, is it, what are they called two point what families what? Sorry, I'm just, I was, when it's like I two, know. when it's two parents, just like a traditional family unit, like I don't a know. nuclear, nuclear, yeah. nuclear family. Yeah. So if there's someone's come from like a a nuclear family, they've got both their parents. Mm-hmm. They've never, they've never really had anything to really struggle with. Their parents are like love each other. They love them. Blah blah blah. It's difficult to kind of look at that and then say, 
you know, well, you know, there was pressure for him because blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's so it's so that, I think that's that for me looking on the outside. But of course, if if someone if someone comes from a household where your the, their mum or their dad is like a a drug addict or the dad's not around because he's been in prison all his life and blah, blah, blah. Like stuff like that, of course, you can you can see the link. But when it, what's so like, for example, like for me, like coming from like a fairly normal house, I think the only thing that's different from my household is that, my dad passed away when I was quite young. So that make, mm. that leads me on to my next point, which is that I'm, I, I'm so, I've never, whenever I used to hear about daddy issues, yeah, I never, ever, mm. ever thought I'd have that because I ain't had a dad to have daddy issues, yeah. Mm. But now I'm scared to, if I look into it, I'm scared of what I'll find. So I think I'm just gonna stay away from it. Sorry, can I quickly just read this? Cause I was, Freud has a twisted version of this theory. Like yeah. even like you wanna you wanna f your mum. He believes we begin to have animosity towards the same sex parent when we're young because we develop a sexual attraction to the parent of the opposite sex. Oh stuff wow! Like that. This this is the stuff that I used to read, and then, and then you look wonder why I think it's all stupid. Can you According repeat that? To Freud, that is why in our youth, yeah, Freud has a twisted version of this theory about um our relationship with our parents. Mm. He believes we began we begin to have animosity towards the same sex parent when we're young because we develop a sexual attraction to the parent of the opposite sex. According to Freud, that is why in our youth, daughters will begin to argue with their mothers while cozying up to their fathers. Wow. wow. Okay, as children, we immediately form a close bond with the parent of the opposite sex. A father is the first male a young girl creates relationships with, so he inevitably becomes her ideal mate, a male mate throughout life, which I think I understand the yeah, point I of like, that you too. see that as an ideal. Mm. Um, but I don't think that you, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that either. So, so, if, so, how come you guys can can disagree with stuff like that when it's psychologists who've gone to university? It's Freud. And these Loads things. of people have gone against Freud. It's a theory. There's theories. There's th- but yeah. that's what I'm saying. They're all theories, yeah, yeah. and that's probably why that's I theory. was a bit, I was anti those theories. Of course, that's a theory that is focusing on one particular thing. But I, but I, that he's not saying your childhood affects your your present. He's saying that you will fancy your dad <laughs> and start. <laughs> <laughs> start beefing with your mum. Do you know what I mean? That's a very specific <laughs> thing that, that the guy's saying. <laughs> so, no, but no, but like he's he's someone that's respected and he studied and blah, blah, blah. And that's the conclusion that he's come to. Which, yeah, you can okay, disagree the with the theorists okay, and so theories. Why are you not, I don't understand. What's because you're saying on a, as a whole theme, you disagree with the fact that, that there are Surely links that's come your, from a theorist though, no? It's come from multiple theorists. Yeah, so, okay, like so almost fact. I don't understand what that's, the point that, is. Okay, so some, a psychologist or a neurologist or whatever who disagrees with Freud will still probably say that your childhood affects your present. Like it, it's an, it's it's like, a, you, bruv, you believe it. I don't even know why you're arguing with me. <laughs> I believe it to an extent still. I still believe it to an extent. It's okay, not, cool. But not, not within everything. Like, yeah, of course, fine. It's all right. Yeah, it's just mad. Ultimately, I have the Quran and the Sunnah and Hadith, and that's all I need. <laughs> Reem wants to kill me. I want to kill you. <laughs> I actually can't wait for us to record it's the a, podcast together. It's a beautiful thing, but I just think that we are encouraged to seek knowledge of course, as Muslims. 100%. And I think that we shouldn't stray away from that because nothing Tell that's fam. happening is what? It's a teller, fam. Yeah, but thank you. I just uh, just to be controversial, man. Reem but it's, it's not this. it's not controversial. Mm. Reem knows that I say th- I say things to be controversial because you two every, every mostly day. agree with each other. <laughs> every day she says. What to, to or to, let, let me just say is Sana always agrees with Reem. Let me just say that. Listen Sana to her be controversial. Let's, if you saw the facial expression she just did, <laughs> she's actually <laughs> now you move a little bit like. Oh, you're such a shit stirrer. A demon. <laughs> I wanted to say that and then I fought against it. <laughs> My girl's always just uh, on crud. I've actually enjoyed this chat. <laughs> Me <you>? too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels, you know, just a little bit intellectual Cause today and that. Because it's your field, that's yeah, why. Yeah, very interesting. Well, not quite. When I get my master's in that, inshallah. Inshallah. Tell us that, MB. Talk to me. It's remember remember, remember a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. we made we made pacts and pledges to lose weight. Has, there, has anyone done that? No, I'm mm-hmm. lying, Liz. Hmm? <laughs> one of my friends pulled me up on it. I was like, um... It's a sticky one still, fam. I think I've... <laughs> Are you lot okay? I've put on weight. If you can see, no, no, I'm <laughs> laughing because we're talking about weight loss and, and Reem is here struggling with a box of Maltesers. She's just <laughs> savaged it now to open it. It was getting on my nerves. There was bare rollers. Like, <laughs> <"Broom, broom, broom." laughs> so cute. 
Yeah, basically, I don't know what happens to that weight loss thing. But I'm doing, I am doing better. My meals are a bit healthier. Alhamdulillah. Arim, how long have you been a vegan? Yeah, but I'm still now? not going to lose mine. Huh? How long have you been a vegan? Well, I was a vegan. Listen, why should you give me that face? In November <laughs> 2017, I was a vegan for six months. And then I became vegetarian because I needed some cheese. Which I still feel bad about, but pfft. then about a month ago or a month and a half ago, I started eating fish because I'm telling you, my body's deficient and I genuinely do feel a difference in my mood and my energy. Really? Because I wasn't doing the vegetarian, yeah, because I wasn't doing the vegetarian life properly where you have to be able to access like everything and have enough money to buy all them powders and do them, do up big salads with seeds and everything. I just, my life is very busy. And I just was struggling. So now I've started eating fish, um, which has helped me a lot. But I I, I, I feel bad because I, I, I swore that I wouldn't do this and here I am. Do you think do you think when you had a when you were a vegan or even when you were a vegetarian, do you feel like you had a balanced diet? When I was vegan, yes, when I was vegetarian, no. Why? Because I because when I was vegan it was a lot more strict. So it was like I wouldn't have chocolate. I wouldn't have like cakes and all of that mm, because it was mm. dairy as well. And so it would be like, I would have loads of vegetables. Is dairy bad for you? I don't think it's that good for you. Is it part of a balanced <laughs> diet? Supposedly, say doctors. But I know my skin flares up when I have dairy and I mm. know that it hurts my abies. Um, So for me, it's like, I shouldn't be having it. And I think I was lactose intolerant or I am but it's calmed down. There was a time where I couldn't have it at all. Otherwise I would feel like I was dying, but it usually calms down. Um, so f yeah, it just, it, it just doesn't work well for me. So that's what started being my downfall. And then mm. after that, I would have things like vegetarian pizza. <laughs> you know <the> ones. <laughs> I'm relying on things like um, meat replacements, like soya and whatever. And I don't think soya is very good for you. So I just thought, it just all went a bit mm -hmm, when I became vegetarian. Why isn't Sorry? soya good? Why isn't soya good for you? I think that I think it's got a lot of estrogen in it. Ooh. So um, a lot of like people have like yeah, like men have grown boobs and stuff from it, and it makes you are more you emotional serious? And that like yeah. Yeah, yeah, because if, if you have a very heavy, I'm sorry, <laughs> bruv, trigger warning. <laughs> we should have given the trigger warning. You ain't right. I'm, I'm dead. So oh, all, the, all, all the men out there currently putting on their bras. I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> bless you. Guys. I do like a chubby oh, girl. Oh shit! Time ago. I'm so dead. But yeah, so it's 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 quite high in in estrogen, as far as I know, and I don't think it's as sustainable as as vegans and vegetarians think it is. <laughs> I was oh, just screaming. Actually the Imagine drinking like, milk and growing boobs. Yeah. Oh, so deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. All right, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so now she's done. She's she's done for the day. I'm done. So I'm now done, I'm done. I'm done. I think pescatarian is the best. Yeah. To be honest, for some reason I don't. I don't. Uh, see fish as meat in 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 like as in i just i don't feel bad for fish let me just say that oh my god do you know what they have a lot of mercury which is not good for us and also the state of the ocean apparently there's not apparently we we eat so much plastic through fish we ingest plastic wow yeah because because of the state of our oceans Oh. So it's it's a bit it's a bit of a sticky one, and it's think, and, and it's not sustainably done at all. But you know what? We I, I don't think anyone can do anything right right now. It's so hard. Like everything mm. we do has a negative effect. Like I, exactly, bruv, I can I could be a vegetarian or vegan and drive, and I'm putting petrol and mashing up the world. Like obviously, I I would love an electric car, but who's gonna pay for it for me? Like I don't have money to be able to buy an electric one. I would swap my car any day for an electric car. Mm. Any day, That's I don't care what enough. it looks like. <sighs> I think Same. I think we should have a whole episode on global warming and climate change and stuff because I feel like it's a huge, huge, huge deal that we're just we're just kind of like rejecting and dismissing for bans. And I think we, would, we really should like take a look at it and come with facts and shit. 
Yeah, I agree. I think I think this is why things like ex- Extinction Rebellion are doing so well. But I do think it's very, not that it's bad. It's a big statement to make, but like climate change is affecting the, I think the rest of the world more than it's affected the West right now. Like to, mm. obviously to some degree it has, but like we're seeing deserts and stuff dry up and droughts and all of that. And I think that 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 we should really be leading this revolution. I don't I don't care who's leading it, but I just think it's 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 interesting that the people that are missing work and the people that are out there in central London and and all of that, you know. I just mm. remembered Ra when when Reem said that, I just clocked a home lady. That yeah, there have been like lots of droughts and like mad shit that's been happening and earthquakes and all the rest of it. Yet the only Oh, when I, whenever you think about any sort of environmentalist rebellion or whatever it is, yeah, it's always let's think about the polar bears. Oh my days! Mm. When I, I've actually just deeped it, mm. our biggest concern is other animals. Mm. When it's like my children will not grow up to see a giraffe in the future, or an <laughs> elephant in the future, they will never know what a polar yeah. bear looks like if we carry on this way. What about the millions of people who are yeah. affected by famine caused by yeah. droughts and like? It's actually yeah. so much. It's, it's affecting the global south more than anywhere right now. And we see it because, it because the increasing temperature is obviously hitting them fastest. I just didn't, I just didn't deep it like that, you yeah. know. But to be fair, I think when I, sorry, Sana, but when I, when I'm, at, when I'm, at, when last time I was in Tanzania, I remember, well, the first time I was in Tanzania and I went there to go visit family. I remember seeing like, this is how they got rid of their garbage because obviously there was no like garbage bin yet. They'd literally put their rubbish outside, plastics and shit yet, and just light it on fire on a tire. Oh God. <laughs> like, and it would be, everyone does that. Do you know what I mean? And when you actually deep yeah. it, it's like, you, you course, can't blame them they would love to have someone to come and take the rubbish for them. Yeah, you can't blame them for that. But I just deeped it. I'm just like, this oh my, the, this is how they get rid of their yeah. plastics and like their rubbish. This is why resource needs to spread further than just within central London or amongst privileged um, young adults who who understand and acknowledge and mm. recognize the issue. Because I hand, like I have all all respect for the activists at the moment. And when I say why, I don't mean that I'm I'm saying don't be doing it. I'm just saying that that people of the global majority, people in the global South, people who are in the, the East, people who are kind of spread across, I think they need to be spreading this information that that is uh, that all these think tanks are aware of and stuff and say, okay, hold on a second, let's set up these things so that we're not wasting. Because even in Iraq, you see it, plastic. To be fair, all they've, day, got, every day. they've got bigger things to worry about. I'm like sorry. what? Like poverty, war. like war, like Habibti, you yeah, you can focus on multiple things at a time. I know, I think I think there's priorities, isn't there? Okay, but like what, like for but example, the world dies what, and then what? I hear that, I hear that. But it's like imagine imagine <laughs> like not even knowing where your food is coming from tomorrow, yet you're worried about oh my days, it's it's not rain for three days. It's just, it's like But that has an that impact. That has an impact on you, of course, but it's like in that moment, your stomach is leading your priorities. Okay. In that moment, you're shook of like Al Shabaab attacking you. Uh, Do you know what I mean? I like, understand. There's there's other there's other more immediate I understand. effects, whereas environmentalists are t- are talking about the long term effects of like what's happening, which is which is also important. But when you're in a situation where you're not privileged enough to think about the long term, right? You're forced to think about the short term. Cool. It's not a priority. There are people in those countries. There's people in every country that have privilege. No, of course. Right. So those people. No, of course, but but I'm saying like, how many how many are those people? I think there's more than we think. I don't think so. I know. think so. I don't Boy, think so. Wait, what what are you ta- are you talking about Iraq? Like any any de- like country which is quote unquote developing. I don't think so. You know, well, I don't think so. I think I think it's just a very well, like different... government go- government officials. Yeah, of course they're the dickheads, but they're also very very corrupt. They don't give a shit about they 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 don't give a shit about their people, let alone the environment. I don't know. I just find <laughs> it gobsmacking. Diff- yeah, it's a difficult one. I find it gobsmacking because I I, I understand your point. Like, in mm. no way am I putting pressure on people who are um who who don't know whether they'll it's wake up tomorrow. It's definitely important, and we should definitely but be the fact talking is, about it and considering South it. Africa yeah, was supposed is supposed to run out of water in twenty fifty. Yeah, yeah. There's there's like a in Cape Town. Yeah, they, they have like water shortages, which are yeah. mad. So it's like the, each household are capped to a certain yeah. amount of water. You know it. Because they because they won't have enough water yeah. for it. Yeah, like it's mad. Like bot- bottles of water are like sky high in terms of the, like how how expensive the they cricket are. team or football team. I don't remember what it was last summer went 
Well, I have dreams about climate change. Like, I, it's Go scary. Mm. And they were capped to have two minute showers maximum. Yeah, yeah. It's horrible. To- one toilet flush mm. is 15 liters. Mm. So you, you literally would ha- are forced to go maybe like to the toilet and not flush. Yeah. Like, your shit is sat in the sink for a bit and you flush sink. once in the house. In the toilet sink. Sorry. <laughs> Must have sink thinking I was talking about the sink. Yeah. <laughs> I was why, like, why is it shit in the toilet an sink? An, you're an animal. Hairwan. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's Pete. I don't know. I just think there should be... I, I, the people like... I'm so dead. What? The people that are... I don't know. Man said Ngombe. I know. It's the people... It's the, the people that it affects the most should be the people that are, are... Should be at the forefront of the argument and should be also the most... The, the loudest, essentially. Yeah. yeah. But it's unfortunate because they also have things that are more immediate effects. And, yeah. and like, they don't have a government that gives a shit about we don't We barely yeah. have a government that yeah. gives a shit about us. Look at them. Yeah. Look at, like, look, I, I'm, I'm I, agreeing I, with the uh, Shams for the first time. This is this is a monumental moment, and that's and that's not to say that, and that's not to say that they don't care because like, mm. okay, look at look at Somalia in in itself. Yeah, there's so many things that they're building up now, and it's and it's because of diaspora Somalis going mm. back to yeah. going back to the homeland yeah. and building like eco friendly yeah. like restaurants and hotels and stuff like that, and like really being like think about sustainable yeah. solutions, which is happening now. But I feel like if you're asking people from back home to care about the environment. When I don't think I don't they think don't they have the information for that. Coming from. It's a lot different. It's a lot more this difficult. This is what I, but, this no, is but, it, but to be fair, even people that live in like the villages and in the ends, I think they're a lot more sustainable than what we are. 100%. Yeah. But the, the impact, what I'm saying is the impact on the global South. I say that because I just don't know what to call it. Um, like the rest of the world, basically not the West. The impact of them is, is hitting faster than it's hitting anywhere. Mm. So of course people don't know where they're gonna get their next meal from because there is drought. Mm. Why are we not addressing the fact that there's famines and droughts? And there always has been, right? But it's increased. Mm. People are dying of of, of things related to the climate. Look at California, the biggest earthquake to hit them in two decades. What? But so this is it. Mm. I think we're not realizing how serious this issue is. Mm. I think that's the problem. I think people are starting to, beginning to take it a bit more seriously. I think I know. I think I think I, I honestly think as lo- as lo- uh, as much as people take the piss out of Extinction Rebellion and all these different environmentalist um, groups, you have to you have to look at the fact that they have woken people up a little bit more. Like yeah, look at Glastonbury. Glastonbury doesn't have near yeah. as half as much rubbish as what they left yeah. in the last couple of years or so. We, barely any more companies are are, are using plastic. single use plastics. Yeah. Supermarkets have made a pledge to to cut down on like unnecessary packaging. Mm. A lot more people are carrying around water bottles instead of, you know what I mean? Like people are just being a lot more, people are recycling a lot more. People are being more a bit more conscious about what they do in the yeah. environment. There are a lot more electric cars. I think people are starting to have that. It's it's moving at a slow pace and Extinction Rebellion want to ex- ex- uh, accelerate that pace, mm. which is understandable because there's like a, they want them to be panicked. Even like, look at the little girl, what's her name? Um, Greta. Greta. Mm. she's made an inc- she's how she old has is done she? amazing she's done an incredible thing and so it's like and even when she was like how in one of her speech in sort of speeches and don't quote me for this but i'm sub i'm sort of sub phrasing but she was like how i don't want them to be to i don't want for mps and politicians to just have to talk about it she goes i want them to panic yeah yeah which exactly. that in itself is so powerful in terms of i want you to realize how important this it's is serious and how serious it is so if if young people like that can have an impact as yeah. much as she has as much as she has had i don't think i don't think greta would have even been given two minutes of mm. anyone's time if it was 10 years ago yeah they don't give mm. a shit but i think yeah. now because people are starting to realize and it's listen it's a shame that young people are having to do it when it's been the generation well above it's fuck us, up. Uh, well it's us yeah. that's going to be affecting isn't it so we have no choice no i'm not talking about us i mean the younger ones the youngers much yeah. younger ones yeah yeah even even for us i think it's important for us to yeah 100 percent. that's that's our children that we're gonna have to raise in that environment we're gonna have to live in that environment if God allows it, God. But yeah. That's all I'm about. So, this is what happens <laughs> when your, your childhood affects your adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> come, come full circle. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we've come full circle, Rizana. You said it. <laughs> all right, lads. Well, I think this has been a glorious chat. Fantastic. And I hope you've all enjoyed. I just want to say it as well, like just as Go like a as like a parting message, and I'm so sorry for taking over and speaking a lot, but um, <laughs> little girl syndrome. But I just feel like unless, <laughs> unless, 
until obviously everything is sort of hashed out and we have a much a better picture of everything um for now i think the most that we can do is dedicate this entire podcast to shukri abdi who Mm -hmm. was the little girl i just got goosebumps who was a little girl who sadly died um earlier on this week she is alleged it's alleged that she was pushed into a river and drowned um Mm. but i think we i don't want to get into the nitty-gritties of that Mm. it's still very raw um and it's affected the somali community in particular quite a lot um but yeah so like this one's this one goes out to home like we obviously have our thoughts and prayers with the family and everyone that's been affected and anyone Mm. who has like a little girl like a little boy who was touched by that story um yeah this one's for you yeah, and on that note, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Thank you all. I've been your host, Asha. Not <laughs> our host, She's but yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to keep up with uh, myself, Sana, and Reem, make sure you follow us on the three pound thirty pod, um, three pound thirty Instagram. Instagram. It's been Instagram. It's been very active recently. We had mad jokes, really connecting with you guys. So thank mm-hmm. you for that. Um, if you want to keep up with me, Ash, every day on Instagram, on everything. And if you want to keep up with me, I'm on Instagram and YouTube and. Snapchat and everywhere and Twitter at Sanasino with two eyes. And if you want to read her book, it's on Sana Sana Akbar on uh, on YouTube. That's her name. On. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Sana Akbar on YouTube. <laughs> the North is a black boy. The North is a black boy. <laughs> If you want to keep up with us and listen to our podcast, make sure you subscribe to us on every platform apart from SoundCloud. We're not on there. But hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.